Jacques? I want to, first of all, thank you and Felicia for your hospitality. Um, you know, we've had a great time here. We've been out, we've been talking with Jean. Um, you know, we talked with the professor. Uh, we've gotten to view sunset over Felicity, which is beautiful. And uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to spend a little bit of time. Nonsense. We only gave you leftovers. <laughs> okay. Well then, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> but thank you. Know, you. Um, no, it's it's always a pleasure coming here and and seeing how the work is progressing on the museum and everything. And you know, I just wanted to. Uh, talk a little bit about where you think the museum is going, uh, where you're at with the World History Project, and then look at the future for this. Well, at age 86 uh, next month, uh, I have to ensure that I lived to 92 to finish the History of Humanity. And so we are hiring uh, students of history and working with them on panels so that uh, the work will keep going. Also, as you know, uh, the museum has 2,700 acres or so, mm -hmm. and there's plenty of room for other monuments on other subjects. Mm -hmm. And since at this point we have some credibility, I expect that some funds will come into the museum for further monuments. For instance, We'd like to do, a mo we have a monument that we would like to do on animals of the world. We would like to do one on inventions, mm -hmm. and the subjects are endless. I, I agree. <laughs> Actually, you may need more land. Um, okay, and then uh, Jean has, it seems to me, really adapted well to this project as an artist, and so you're going to continue to work with him into the future? Well, as long as we engrave, Jean is our number one choice as an artist. Now, you're getting more academic involvement, it looks like, with Northern Arizona University, their Yuma campus, and all of that. And that's the kind of thing that you would like to see more of happen, correct? Well, the whole point of the museum is to... Uh, what well, we've trademarked, lessons for millennia, but that's exactly it. What we're trying to do is give a picture of history for students of the future. Describe for me, if you can, like what your work schedule is like in compiling all the information for the panels and editing that and preparing Oh, good Lord. Uh, from beginning to end? Yeah, th kind of walk me through the process a little we bit. Have three or four hours. Okay. <laughs> the, it's a 14-point uh, process. Okay. But essentially, the difficult part is to select the topics because we are restricted mm -hmm. on a certain number of panels on various subjects. And then once the topic is selected, say Alexander the Great, there have been a thousand books written. Right. How do you boil it down to one panel, leaving room for a drawing? <laughs> and uh, that's, I think, what we have learned to do reasonably well. Uh, once a topic is selected, then we go to a PowerPoint and we go through endless drafts. Then it goes to a CAD program and that from there, it's cut into rubber, and uh, the, and then uh, there are endless revisions, and eventually the rubber is pasted onto the granite and sandblasted, and then Jean or another artist comes along and fills in the frames with the pre-selected drawings. That's got to be incredibly difficult to condense so much information into so it fits into a, a panel with an illustration. It takes an arbitrary soul. <laughs> and we have found one. <laughs> um, no, I mean, it, it just boggles my mind because, I mean, how many books or sources do you typically go through for a panel? 
because I mean, it seems to me you're pulling from philosophers, poets, songwriters, traditional songs well, and it, plays and mythology no, well, and well, I mean depends. everything. I Geology. Mean, you know, for, for if a topic is early music, then we go to the sources of early music and books and uh, the, the internet has fairly good sources also. And then from that, you have to select what seems important. So how much time would you say each panel takes? Very wildly. The, okay. the panel on the history of the United States called Interesting Times, which has a, a curve mm -hmm. of all the major events right. that have affected us. Uh, that went through perhaps 50 revisions. And uh, that was, no, oh, it was a marvelous occasion to look like an idiot, you know. <laughs> it's easy to do for some of us. I mean, I could, I can pull it off pretty well. I know you're, you're really. I mean, you approach this with a good energy and a good. You approach this with a good energy and a good spirit. What do you want to leave for people? I mean, you obviously are very um, passionate about leaving behind a legacy that's very positive and enlightening for humanity. Um, we're, we're just trying to do our best with a concept that's extremely interesting. If you had told me 25 years ago that I would create a museum, I would have run right out the door. <laughs> but it evolved. Mm -hmm. And as it evolves, you become more and more interested in the work. So I mean, it's, it's pretty driven for one man to create this well, scope of project. I'll tell you, when we decided to do the history of the United States, I did have some bad nights uh, thinking that, boy, we've really bitten off more than we can <laughs> chew, you know? Mm -hmm. And actually, it turned out all right eventually. What has been the response from, like, um, other academics and, and that sort of thing? Well, you know, I did receive an A-plus uh, from a noted historian in writing. <laughs> so and they actually assigned I, their name to I that. get one every 65 years. The next one is a way away. Yeah, you're a patient man, though. Okay. Now, I know there's, you know, more growing recognition of this museum uh, nationally and internationally, and uh, there's actually now some calls officially for this to be designated a World Heritage Site, which I think is, is appropriate. And uh, it's nice to have one that's new that can evolve into the future instead of going back into the past and all of that. And so we've got, what, declarations from the state of New Hampshire and the Arizona State Senate? And that's supporting this, isn't it? Well, that, that's what it says. <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't have my glasses on, so you'll have to tell me. Uh, no, but I mean, is that what you would l like to see happen then, uh, This that kind of designation for this? Well, it, it has to go through the United Nations. And right now, I understand the U.S. hasn't paid its UNESCO fees. And so I would say this will probably happen, you know, perhaps 30 or 40 years from now. Maybe that's why everything that's a World yeah. Heritage Site is usually about a thousand years old. Yeah. That's how long it takes the bureaucracy. Actually, it could happen quickly if the Department of Interior would listen to the states of Arizona and New Hampshire. Now, I, right now, the Department of Interior mm -hmm. suffers from se a severe case of faulty hearing. <laughs> uh, actually uh, have other issues that uh, I might agree with you with them on that. Um, but I don't see anything here from uh, the California State Legislature or California State Senator or Jerry Brown or anything. No, you have to so. understand California, a state of, what, 35 million people. At the very end, there's a county called Imperial, 
which has perhaps 250,000 people. So right away, there's no political power. And we have two people, at, maybe up to 30 people, <laughs> at the very end of Imperial County. So our, I would say our political power is negative. <laughs> Well, I, I'm sorry to hear that because I think political power so, should sometimes be based more upon merit than numbers. And oh, you're an optimist. I'm a fool, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but in any case, no. But well, I'm an I optimist think it's a very good... also. But I, 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 look, you have to be in this the, business. The point is, what counts in life is to do what has to be done. You know the. We knew absolutely nothing about this. And so for 20 years or so, we were politely scorned, perhaps not altogether without reason, but as being kooks in the desert and what were, what were we doing? And then at some point, it was decided that we were only partial kooks instead of <laughs> total kooks. I, that's a very good step. Because the desert, if you're in the desert, you're essentially a kook. So being a partial cook is kind of up on the rungs. The desert is very important because this, the desert climate will preserve all of this. And this is supposed to last, other this is supposed to last what, up to 4,000 years or so? We, the structural engineers, which we were told were the best of the Southwest, were given specifications of 4,000 years. This was to do one single monument mm -hmm. uh, to remember a few names and persons we cared about. And we had absolutely no intention of ever building a second one. Uh, like, let alone a third, fourth, fifth. <laughs> but, and on the website you will see, I mean, you, you'll see the trench goes down three feet into the ground and uh, you know, on the book, it shows the uh, amounts of cement and steel. And it, actually, I'm a Marine, and mm -hmm. I consider those pretty good anti-tank obstacles. Well, let's uh, let's keep it so they're not used for that purpose. <laughs> but but uh, what do you think people are going to think about this when they come to Felicity, say, 100 years from now or 500 years from now? What do you hope they find and take away from the experience? I have no idea, but I would suspect that they will like what they find and they will find it interesting. And this is assuming they can still read English. That's why we put a Rosetta Stone in the middle. <laughs> it can't hurt, <laughs> that's for sure. Okay, um, and then you really seem to have a passion for remembering. Um, we dedicated Felicity when we founded the town. It was dedicated to remembrance. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think that this is at all unusual. I suspect that the concept of remembrance is something that's very deeply rooted in every single human being. And I won't discuss it with you now, but we have a new project that will try to resolve some of the problems. Really? That's for another, that's for the next time. We'll get to that now, <laughs> the other, next time. You're, uh, so you're at 80, almost 86 now. What? You're at almost 86. You're coming up with more projects. Well, I told you, you and I are both optimists. 